Welcome back guys, it's Dina and today I have a treat for you. It's Bung Bo Wei time. This dish originated in Hoi, Vietnam. The combined complexity of flavor creates an umami effect. If you enjoy my videos, don't forget to do the following things. Click like to this video, share this with your friends and family, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button so you know when my new videos are uploaded. Today's recipe is an instant pot creation to make cooking easy on a weeknight. The bò hoi broth is full of beefy, spicy flavors. A great balance between sweet, salty, spiciness, and some earthiness from fish sauce or shrimp paste. There's lemongrass and paprika and chili to bring it up to another level. And traditionally, it's served with beef shank, tendon, pork blood pudding, pork miklo slices, pork hock, and garnished with lots of fresh herbs. The tendon and pork hock makes this broth so silky and smooth, filling it with lots of collagen that's great for your skin. Not only that, the paprika has healing properties and treats skin problems. It also supports digestion, prevents hair loss, helps maintain your hair color, induces sleep, and decreases the risk of heart attack. Lots and lots of anti-inflammatory properties from paprika. Without further ado, let's get cooking. Do you remember what's the first thing we all should do before making a pot of broth? If you answered pre-boil and cleanse the bone, you're absolutely right. Good job. I'm using a one and a half pound beef shank piece. If you can't find beef shank at your local Asian market, then use brisket. That is a great substitute. It has the same consistency and texture as beef shank once it's been softened. I'm also adding to the cleansing pot the beef tendon and pork hocks that I also found at my local Asian grocery store. If yours is not thinly sliced like mine, it will still work just fine. They're usually a lot thicker, but I found these at the Korean market and it was convenient for me so I grabbed them. But I still prefer the little thicker slices because it doesn't fall apart as easily. Add one tablespoon of salt to help cleanse the meat and bones. Fill the pot with water till everything is covered up. Bring to a boil. Once it begins to boil, reduce the heat to a medium high and allow to simmer for 15 minutes. Turn off your heat and remove the meat. Rinse under tap water to remove any debris. Set aside for later. It's time to prepare the fresh aromatics. Roast the onion and ginger until they are slightly charred. You can do that under the broiler in your oven or in an air fryer. Mince 3 quarter cups of lemongrass really finely. It's time to make the aromatics, the saute paste. Set mode to saute. Begin by adding 8 tablespoons of olive oil or cooking oil into your instant pot. Add 2 tablespoons of minced garlic. Stir the garlic to prevent burning. Add a quarter cup of Balway seasoning into the garlic and oil. Add 2 tablespoons of sweet paprika. Mix the seasoning until it is saturated with oil. When you begin to hear the sizzle, turn off the saute mode on your Instant Pot. This will prevent burning of spices. The Instant Pot will still be very hot and continue to cook the spices. Add 2 more tablespoons of olive oil if the mixture appears to be on the drier side. Add 3 quarter cups of minced lemongrass. This will add a minty citrus flavor profile. Mix until everything is well incorporated. We now have our aromatic saute paste. If you can't find this seasoning packet at your local Asian grocery store, don't worry. I have the from scratch recipe on my website linked below. Turn on the saute mode again and drizzle a small amount of hot water to dissolve the paste. Fill the pot halfway up with hot boiling water. Stir the dissolved paste around as you add more hot water into the instant pot. Time to add more flavor. One palm sugar stick. Two tablespoons of salt. 
Now it's time for some earthy flavors. You can add anywhere between 2 to 4 tablespoons of fish sauce and 1 to 2 tablespoons of the shrimp paste. The shrimp paste is optional in the broth. You can also leave it on the side for guests to add to their own bowls. That is what I will do because not everyone in my family eats shrimp paste. A few more things and we're ready to let this pot start cooking. Add in your beef shank, tendon, and pork hocks. Add the roasted onion and ginger pieces along with half a cup of chicken bouillon. While mixing the content of the pot, add more hot water until it reaches the maximum line. Turn off the saute mode. With the vent open, secure the lid. Then close the vents. Select the soup broth mode. Set the timer for 45 minutes and you'll do a 40 minute natural release. If you have more meat in the pot than I do, add an additional 10 minutes to your timer. Time to prepare the noodles since they take a while to cook as well. You can use whichever size vermicelli you want. Traditionally, the Bumboi noodles are a little thicker and they are the XL size. Fill a pot with room temperature water, add a tablespoon of salt to it. Set the heat to high and add the noodles directly into the pot. Stir them to prevent sticking. The process of cooking them in room temperature water allows them to cook evenly throughout without having the outside being too cooked and the inside raw. Let it come to a boil and then reduce the heat to a medium-high simmering state. Simmer for 12 to 14 minutes. Al dente is 12 minutes and softer is 14. Rinse the noodle under cool top water to remove excess starches and to stop the cooking. Bundle into individual portion and set aside for later. Let's prepare the pork blood if you're interested in eating that. It is also traditional to have pork blood in our bahoy, but if you don't eat it or your family members don't like it, you can omit it. It is purely optional. If you've never tasted pork blood pudding, it's a little bit chalky, gamey, and earthy. Carefully remove the pork blood from its container. It's a little stuck as you can see. Use the knife to let in some air. It'll pop right out. Just be careful not to get blood all over yourself. It's a bit delicate, so gently slice them into one inch slabs. Prepare a pot with room temperature water. Add one tablespoon of salt and three tablespoons of vinegar. The vinegar and salt will remove and reduce the smell of gaminess from the pork blood pudding. Add the pork blood pudding into the water. Turn on the heat and set it on high. Bring it to a simmer, reduce the heat to medium, and allow to cook between 20 to 25 minutes until it is solid and the color has changed from red to an earthly brown. Rinse the pork blood pudding under tap water to remove debris. Set aside for later. The broth is finally done. It's time to remove the meat and tendon so that it can cool down enough for us to slice up. The aroma is incredible you guys. It smells so good. You can smell the beefy broth spiced with lemongrass, cayenne pepper, paprika, ginger, garlic. It is so delicious in the house right now. Not to mention the wonderful, beautiful, silky, smooth texture of the broth because of all the collagen we steeped out of the beef, the pork hocks, and the beef tendon. Okay, it's time to remove all the proteins, allow them to cool down so that we can slice them up and get them ready for plating. Once everything has been removed, fill the pot up with hot water all the way till one inch before the lid. Turn on saute mode and bring to a boil. Turn off the pot. It's time to grab some herbs for the bumbo white. If you don't have any in your garden, pick up some of your favorites from the supermarket. Herbs that pair well with bumbo white are minced, Vietnamese coriander, green onions, and cilantro. In addition, vegetables that pair really well are red and green cabbages, red onion, all thinly sliced, and as well as bean sprouts. 
You can serve these on the side or directly into the bowl so that the broth can tenderize them, which is how I prefer it. Aside from herbs and vegetables, you can also give your guests the opportunity to add in chili, shrimp paste, and lime juice. After rinsing off the herbs, prepare them however you want. Slice an onion, leave the cilantro whole or chop it up. You can remove the leaves from the stems of the other herbs or leave them whole. Then set them aside for later garnishing. It's time to prepare the steamed pork loaf. Slice them thin into individual pieces. This one I picked up at my local Vietnamese deli. You can also find them at the Asian supermarket in the refrigerated section. This particular one has peppercorns and tendon mixed into it. Next, slice up the tendon that's been cooling. Slice up the beef shank as well. Mine was a little too soft, so I'm slicing them a little thicker than I normally would. Slice the pork blood pudding into smaller chunks. Alright guys, it's my favorite part, the plating, because we're that much closer to the eating. Remember, you don't have to put the vegetable underneath the noodles. I do it because I like the broth to tenderize my vegetable a little bit more so it's easier to eat. You can set your vegetable and herbs on the side so that your guests can put whatever amount that they want to eat into their bowls. This is your noodle soup. If you love a strong beefy flavor, a little bit of heat that complements all the fresh herbs and meat. I hope that you've enjoyed cooking with me today. And I hope that you continue to practice to become the master chefs in your own home. If you've enjoyed your time with me today, check that like button, share this video with your friends and family, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button so you know when new videos are uploaded. Written recipes are available on my website. Until next time my friends, goodbye.